Hi Capricorn, welcome to your reading. This is gonna be for the next 10 days. It is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. If this one doesn't resonate, definitely check out those other placements. It is a general reading, so it may not resonate for everyone who watches. So we're gonna get into the recent past, current energy, near future, and then we're gonna clarify that and get some Oracle cards for you. I have a beautiful new deck I'm gonna be pulling from for the first time starting this year. It is, it's just great. It has some beautiful messages. It's an Australian deck. Anyway, if you are returning, welcome back. Thank you guys for all of your support. If you're new, welcome. I do hope if you enjoy the messages, you'll consider subscribing. And if you would like a personal reading, that information is in the description box below or the about section of my channel. Okay, let's get these straight and let's see what's going on over these next 10 days or whenever you click into this, you know how the energy works if you've been watching tarot. Okay, Let's see what you're overall. We have the star. I have to lay her down because of her nakedness and I'm not putting tape on my cards. So we're just going to have to lay them down when they're, they're naked ones. So there's some healing going on, but there's also, there's so many aspects to this card that we don't always talk about. Yes, this is about healing. Yes, it can be about wishes coming true. It can be Aquarian energy as well because it is Aquarius. That's the sign it represents. So because we're in January and this is popping up, to me, when I'm reading it this time, around Aquarius time, there could be some things that you're letting go of and leaving in the past and focusing more on the future. Because her energy, I'll cover her so that you can see this, and most people know what this looks like. She's pouring the water out behind and pouring this into what's actually filling her up. So it's about focusing more of your energy on the things that make you, because this is water, it's obviously representative of emotional. What's going to make you more emotionally fulfilled? Because the suggestion is towards this time frame. So as you're, and we just switched into, by the way, Aquarius energy on the 20th. So this could be a time when you're being asked to release the things and heal from the things that have happened in the past and focus more on the future, which is not easy. But I think a lot of your energy is going to be shifted and you know why because that planet did its big shift on the 20th as well. So for some of you, this is really about just kind of letting stuff from the past heal the best that you know how and focus more on what's going to be emotionally fulfilling for you moving forward. Okay, so that's a big overall energy. Now, is all of this going to unfold in the next 10 days? It may not. It may take time throughout the entire Aquarian energy, but more of the focus over the next 10 days is what we're narrowing in on. So the recent past, we have the Hermit. There's definitely some self-reflection. And you guys know, um, I will always say, I think we need to take accountability for our own actions and our own feelings. Those are the only ones we have any control over. And in this case, I want to say, for some of you, you realize that you can't continue to fight for something. The Eight of Pentacles is, yes, about hard work. Everybody reads it different. But in my case, in this particular reading, it feels like, you, you can't keep pushing something that just isn't working. It doesn't matter how much effort you put in, how much money you put in, how much whatever it is. You just can't sometimes make something happen. And I feel like for some of you, there's a big realization around that. Um, for some of you, this is you're going to take a break from work or maybe you need to take a step back and realize that you put more focus on your work than you do some other things. Maybe that's where your head is a lot of times. And then the five of pentacles. So some of you, this is, you are really leaving some stuff in, in the past. This isn't just about, oh, you're going to be currently walking away from this, or you're going to be abandoning this. I think there is a fear of abandoning other people or of feeling abandoned. Yes, we all have those in some aspect of our life. But in this case, I just don't think this is the prominent energy. I think you've realized that if people are going to leave if they're going to leave. It doesn't matter how hard you try. Or you're going to end up having to leave regardless of how hard somebody else tries. If something doesn't fit, it just doesn't fit. So you may have had some of those realizations in the recent past. So in the current energy, this is great because, God, there's so much about you just leaving things in the past, especially a lot of things that have hurt you. Um, there could be three people involved in a situation. doesn't have to be a third party necessarily, but it could be that things that were really hurting you, I think you're finally starting to work on and heal. Star card and this in reverse. Two of swords. Maybe for a long time you couldn't see what you needed to do or what steps you needed to take to get to that place. Um, some of you, there's a decision to be made 
and maybe there's pain involved in that and you don't want something to hurt so you're concerned about how to make this choice I understand that as well all you can do is reflect and make the choice that is best for you that's all you can ever do so if you're still feeling a little bit stuck about a decision you have to make because obviously you don't want to create pain for yourself or anybody else then I think with the moon in reverse you're going to get the information that you need uh, for some of you, there's going to be some significance. You're, you're going right from Aquarius to the moon, which is Pisces. There's going to be some real clarity coming up between this time that we're speaking during the beginning of Aquarius into Pisces season, which is the end of February, into March. So for a lot of you, this is going to be a very significant time frame in which you work through a lot of this energy. So in the near future, we have the Ten of Wands in reverse. See, the way that this shows up, in the upright, it says, mm, you're almost there. You're almost there. You're about to put down this burden. When it's in reverse, that tells me whatever burden you had, you just decided to completely drop it. And this is about you. This isn't about something or someone ar around you. This is making a conscious decision to let go of things that have been weighing you down that no longer belong. Whether it's just energy thoughts, people think whatever it is something had been weighing you down for some period of time and in the future you're just finally going to let it go makes sense all the energy is working up justice in reverse you may feel like letting go is the only option that you have because if there is something legal going on you may feel like justice just isn't on your side and it may not be right now it doesn't mean you can't release it for the time being things can always be revisited but i think for some of you you think there's an unfairness involved in this situation. Let's see what's under that. Ten of Cups. Okay, so this is Spirit's way of saying all of this energy that's working up to the near future, the reason that they are trying to say, just put down the burden of this, because is, even though it may be that you feel like this is not fair or something's out of balance, they're doing it for you. It's about you. It's about your family. It's about the happiness. Um, this could be about home. It could be about a relationship. Maybe you're having to let go of something that happened in the past. I don't even think it involves you. It doesn't feel like somebody cheated. It doesn't feel like that kind of energy. It's not about that part of the relationship. This is about your feeling happy with the people that you spend the most time with and the energy on the people that are worth it. And like I said before, it's like you can only work so hard in hopes that a situation is going to go in your favor. And if it's just not looking that way right now, it doesn't mean that it isn't going to work out in the future. We'll get clarification about that because I'm interested to see what happens for those of you that feel like something has failed you, either the system or just people in general where something felt very unjust. Let's see what the challenge is for the next 10 days. We've got the seven of wands. So there could be um, a it may be hard for you. It may be hard for you to defend yourself. You know, other people may have opinions about what you should do. And right now you're just feeling like, leave me the, you know what, alone. Like I have my way of thinking and I get that. But this is also not wanting to be, maybe a part of you doesn't want to be that like focal point for others. Because a lot of times this can be somebody who's kind of in the center of attention and there's so much energy coming at them. So if there does seem to be a lot coming at you all at once, um, this is the challenge. Remember, here in the near future, it's about you just letting it go. So some of you, it literally is just like turning that switch and doing the best that you can to say, I can't take this anymore. I'm just going to let it go. All right, let's get to clarifying. Let's see what the star card, what the messages we have. To I definitely feel like you're focused more on leaving something that emotionally that's just been weighing on you kind of behind, like draining that energy from your body so it doesn't hold you back or hold you down. So we have the seven of cups. So there's a lot of different energies with this as well. This could be that there's so many different things popping up in your life. Maybe some of you, you may have finally gotten like a little kick of, oh wow, there's so many things that I'm interested in doing right now. I can't hang in this energy because there's so many different options. Now this can also create confusion. Yes, sometimes the Seven of Cups can be something like uh, overwhelming. Maybe there's a lot of things around you. Again, with the Seven of Wands, you've got a lot of people coming at you. Maybe there's a lot going on, um, different things that you really want to experience or do 
and you may feel a little bit like, which direction do I go? But this is also about things that you've been hoping and wishing for with the star card. So I'd say that's more what this is about. It's about filling those little cups one at a time and being able to focus more on yourself and future energy. So if there's these little things that you want to do because you've allowed yourself to let go of this other energy, it's a good thing. So the Six of Cups, it's great. It's, there's going to be some coming together um, family-wise. There's definitely a, a lot of emotional happiness. This is childlike energy. So some of you could be going out and doing activities with your children, doing things that you haven't done in a long time. It just feels like a happy energy. I don't know how else to describe it. This could also be connected to something from the past. So a person from the past that you're having trouble with, it may be connected to children. Here's that hermit again. This is really being clear uh, about the things that you do and don't want in your life. Of course, that snake can represent that type of energy. But really what it is, is about a version of yourself that you're releasing. So you're still going to be going through releasing the old you. It's going to take time. Pluto doesn't move quickly. It moves slow. So everything that you've been hit with over the last 15 years, it's going to take time for you to shed that skin and start becoming this new version of yourself. It starts with releasing things you can no longer carry. So that's a, a good one. I like the way that one comes out because this is inner reflection, again, of things that you do and don't want to put your energy into. And then we have the two. Interesting because the two of swords is coming out in reverse. So there's some decision that's easy for you. One is I, I don't want to focus on something and put energy into something that isn't going to be there for me. That's an, a fairly simple decision, depending on where you stand in that relationship. Um, so a lot of you, there's a reflection there. Something else is happening over here. So there could be two situations where you've got to make decisions. One's fairly easy. Another one may be difficult. The seven of pentacles, interesting because the eight of pentacles in reverse tells me you're not wanting to put energy, money, work into something. The seven of pentacles, usually it's about, is it worth it? Is it worth continuing to put my time and energy? So you only you know what that's about for, excuse me, for you. The three of swords with the two of swords, Queen of Cups in reverse. So the biggest question is, have you learned about self-love? Do we all understand it? Absolutely. Is it always easy to put it into place and allow ourselves to really just focus on us and make a decision based on that? Not necessarily. This could also involve somebody, um, a feet, this is female, so it's not going to resonate for everybody. There may be a tough decision to make around a female energy. It doesn't matter who they are in your life. It just may be a hard one. Maybe you're dealing with somebody who's emotionally immature. That may be a third person that's involved. Somebody else is. But if you're divorced and have separate partners, then there's a child involved. Or for some of you, this could be a mother figure that you're having trouble with and you don't... Um, making a decision about this is going to seem unfair and it, you don't want to hurt anybody. There's lots of different scenarios there. So take that, how that resonates. Two of swords with the moon in reverse. Let's see. We've got the high priestess. Okay. This is going to be a time where if you're not focused on the things that you've learned, meaning that you've got to love yourself first and choose for you first, what works for you best. Um, you could also feel like maybe my intuition is wrong. Was I making decisions where there were things seeming very, what I call, well, what everybody would call Neptunian energy. Was, was I clouded? Was I in the dark? How do I go forward? Because this feels very much like I'm having a difficult time making a choice about something and I don't know how to trust my intuition. Well, in the future, you're going to make it because if it's a burden, it's got to go. And even though something may not have worked out in your favor, again, it's for your happiness. It's for you to make a decision. It may not make you feel good in the moment, but things will work out in the future because they're trying to tell you that all in all, there's going to be a happiness here. Either there's a happy family unit that ends up working out. There's something that works out around your home when you let this go, when you let go of the burden of the other thing. So let's keep going. That Eight of Pentacles, they keep wanting to say the same thing. Stop spending the money. If you've been investing in anything that has to do with legal, stop. Like, I'm not going to tell you what to do, I'm, but I'm telling you what to do. The energy here is like, stop. Stop putting that burden on yourself. 
it's not going to be worth it. You put so much into it at this point. They just want you to focus on the happiness, your home, and what you're being led to. Even if it seems unfair and that really eats your crawl, I get it. But it's time to stop putting the energy and the money into it. And then we have judgment. All right, so spirit, this is kind of spirit's way. When it's upright, reverse, whatever, there's a decision that's already been made. It's like the call has been made. It's done. You already know what the outcome is at this point. So you have a choice to make about whether you want to leave that behind and just let it go and keep moving and be happy. Seven of Wands, your challenge. We have the Eight of Cups. Walking away is really hard. It's a challenge. And some of you, this is some kind of a change and it's hard to let go of the emotions. But I think you will. I definitely think you will. All right, let's keep going. Let's see what other things are coming in because this is basically for some of you, it may not be for everybody, what the energy is like. So let's get a feel for what the advice is and what might be coming towards you. It's coming towards Capricorn. All right, so what coming, justice. <laughs> okay, well, see what I said? They're trying to lead you here because what's coming towards you is the justice. So it may not be in the immediate future, but whatever choice you have to make for yourself, it's eventually going to come. So just know this is what's coming towards you. Leading from Aquarius into Pisces, so probably sometime in Pisces season or after. Um, strength, yeah, this has worn you out just enough. They're like, this is what's, you're going to be tired. Trust me, it's going to come. The Five of Swords, you're not going to be stressed anymore. Or I'm sorry, the Two of Swords. It looks like the five to me in this deck, but it's upside down. So a decision will be made. Yes, it will have probably drained you a little bit energetic, energetically, but things are going to balance out and you're going to be happy about it. Look at that. So for some of you, this could be balanced within a relationship. Um, things are going to start improving. That's what's coming towards you. If you're already in a relationship, things are going to get, um, I want to say get steamy, which is good. I mean, for Valentine's Day, okay, great. If you celebrate it, if you don't, that's okay. For some of you, this is going to be connecting with somebody because you're allowing something from the past to go and not stay connected to that. This could be somebody new that's coming into your life and you find that they're much more balanced or much more like you than somebody you've dealt with in the past. Six of Cups, they could remind you of somebody from your childhood or they could be somebody from your childhood. So just be prepared. That doesn't always happen. All right, let's see what the advice is. That was the next thing. Okay, so the moon. Don't allow yourself to keep your head in the clouds about anything. Everything's going to be made perfectly clear to you. So just whatever you hear, pay attention. Don't let things slide by you. The, the messages are very clear. Pay attention to the signs. The hermit in reverse. Good. So you're going to be coming. The advice is to get yourself back out of the the ref, the inner reflection. Allow yourself to come out of that. It seems like you're coming out of maybe a time of needing to go within. Queen of Swords. Be really honest. That's the advice. Be truly, truly honest and clear. Cut. Don't mince words. Cut right to the chase with anything that's coming up for you with the people around you that you care about. And then the King of Pentacles. Ooh. That's a good sign. So some of you, this is an indication that wherever you had lost um, that feeling of stability, like you had control over things, you're going to regain control. It doesn't matter what gender you are. This is about seeing your life um, in, a, in a light that makes you feel not only like you've accomplished something, but you're back in control. You could be in a space where you feel back in control of your finances. Life starts to seem... Like it's flowing again. And this is advice. They're like, this is how you need to treat the things, not treat the things. How do I want to express this? It's like, this is what the energy you need to embody and remember who you are because it is your card. I mean, all pentacles are going to be earth signs. So remember who you are. That's what it is. Just remember, this is what you can create at any given time. Anytime you go through a challenge, it can feel like it's going to break you down, but you never stop getting back up. I just keep wanting to say, remember who you are. All right, so we're going to get, we'll close out with the card that I was talking about. It's really great. I hope you guys will stick around. Let's see what the Lover's Oracle has. 
Acceptance is the key to inner peace. At times we must accept things as they are. There is no point trying to change that which is beyond our control. That's what I was saying before. It's like some things you just can't control and we have to accept them for what they are. Even if they seem unjust, just remember that justice card came right out when I asked what was coming for you. And then we have balance. Love is not always about agreeing just for the sake of it. A great relationship is one that both supports and challenges. That could be tough when we're going through the challenge with something. But if you have some ups and downs in your partnership, just know it's healthy to have some, you know, ins and outs. My beloved, though we may be physically apart spiritually, we are always united for love, transcends space and time. Nothing is missing. This could be somebody who lost a loved one. It doesn't have to be a partner. This could be a parent. This could be a grandparent. It could be somebody that ju I just feel really strongly lately. More people connected to those I read for in general readings are wanting to come through and let you know that they're there. I think you know that. You're probably seeing, I just saw, yes, 1111. That's the most common one. 1212. Um, 1023 and someone's birthday maybe 1019 is popping up I don't know whether those numbers are significant to you or not all right let's get a couple of cards from the wisdom of the oracle this is for Capricorn what do we have okay the here and now so of course they always tell you this try to stay as much in the present moment as you can you could be 32, born on the 3rd, the 2nd, or the 5th of the month. Pay attention to the 5th of February, okay? There's something about the 5th of February. I just heard that, so write it down. Message in a bottle. Okay, so you could hear something around the same thing. A lot of this is projecting energy into February beyond the 10 days. I don't care if it comes up. I'm going to let you know. The 15th of February could also be significant. So you could be born on the 15th, the 1st, the 5th. Or the sixth, you have two fives. Remember, that's about change. So significant change. Something could pop up in the next 10 days where there's a lot of change. Do your best to just go with it. Okay? Sometimes we have to make choices that aren't easy, but they're asking you to go with the flow the best that you can. You're going to be glad you did. You could be born on the seventh. And yeah, there's there could be some a little bit of a chaos and conflict. You know, a little uproar. And you're tired of it. That's what I keep hearing. Like you're tired of this chaos. You just want it to be done. So you could be 33, born on the 3rd or the 6th of the month. All right, so this is the deck I was talking about. It's really stunning. These are the Australian animal cards, the animal oracle cards. I'm going to actually read the message to you because, of course, I can't memorize all the messages. But I want to pull one for you and then we'll read it. Okay, so you got the a beautiful change. The number 19, remember I said 1019? So the number 19 could be significant for some of you as well. I called it the cane toad. I don't know if that's how it reads, if I didn't read it properly. Let's see, because I don't think that's what it's called. I'm going to go to 19 and read it to you. I was just there for another reading the other day. Is it cane? Yeah, it is the cane toad. Beautiful change. The cane toad was introduced into Australia in the 1930s to control agricultural pests and having no natural predators have become an invasive and feral pest, okay? So that's what they are. Let's get the message. Cane Toad is here to remind us that all we have, we all have an inner beauty, regardless of the outer image, often finding ourselves in toxic and poisonous relationships because we have disconnected from our own inner beauty. Mm. Remember, we discussed the self-love. And if you're having to walk away from something because there is toxicity there, this may be the time when you're starting to realize it. Cane Toad shows us we can magically transform our current situation and create the beautiful change we desire. We are invited to see our inner beauty and rid ourselves of toxic people, places, and things that don't allow our true inner beauty to shine. This card asks you to transform through your own metamorphosis and create the beautiful change you have been wanting. Remember the card with the hermit was showing, we were talking about that shedding of the old version of yourself. And I say old, the one that allowed people to bring you down or not feeling good enough and not loving yourself enough to walk away from things that no longer serve you. Meta metamorphosis change, expose your inner beauty. All right, so those are your messages for the next 10 days. Thank you so much for being here. I love you all so much. I'm sending you tons of love. If you would like a personal, that information is in the description box below or the about section of my channel. Have an amazing 10 days. Take good care and I will see you in the next one.